I, I am blown away, but the greatest joy of talking to young guys and young women is when people come up to me and say, my dad gave me your book, or my teacher gave me your book. And that's probably the, my, I'm 75 years old, and that's the joy. Mm-hmm. You know, that the book is handed down from generation to generation, because as I said, we, why don't we teach money at school? That was my question when I was nine years old. I said, hey, when are we gonna learn about money? Mm-hmm. And we still don't teach about money. And this is the worst part about it today. You know, let's get back to 2023. This whole thing about censorship and all this and why are people afraid of speaking up is a lot of people like this COVID thing, a lot of doctors wouldn't say anything because they would lose their job. And so when you look at what happens when you're afraid of losing your job, you kind of lose your freedom, your freedom of speech, you can get censored, you know, people can push you around and all this. So for me personally, my poor dad who was a great guy, he ran for lieutenant governor of the state of Hawaii because Hawaii is one of the most corrupt states in the union. And um, he ran against his boss, the governor. And the moment my dad, poor dad, declared he was going to run for lieutenant governor as a Republican, which proves how stupid he was in Hawaii because he should have he registered as a communist. He'd been a lot better in Hawaii. But anyway, his friends left him. Mm. His best friends left him and said, look, we can't go with you because if we endorse you, we'll lose our jobs. So at that time, I was a U.S. Marine. I was in flight school in Florida, getting ready to go to Vietnam. And my dad, what crushed him was his best friends left him. They couldn't support him, even though they knew the governor and the whole state of Hawaii was corrupt. But they had, they're had they so afraid of losing their jobs. And so that kind of rung in my head. How many people today are their lives dictated to the fear of losing their job or their pension, as the case may be? I flunked out of high school twice because I can't write. Imagine that. I flunked my sophomore year and my senior year. And if you see my Ferrari, the license plate does 1.9 GPA. <laughs> if you had met me when I was 18 years old, you said, someday this guy's going to write the number one book in personal finance and history. You would say, there's not a prayer in hell. This guy can do that. My head was so far up my butt. You know, but I just couldn't, I just couldn't drink the Kool-Aid, if you know what I mean. Like like most people, I had no idea. I was a surfer kid growing up in Hawaii. I was flunking out of school. My poor dad was the head of education, you know, Stanford, University of Chicago, Northwestern. He did all the right things. He was head of education, straight A student. And when I was 16, he said to me, I'm not going to pay for your college education because you'll just waste it. I'm not a student. And so that might have been the best thing because a lot of times we coddle our kids. You know, we give them everything, give everybody a trophy. And poor dad says, you're really incompetent. And my rich dad, who was my best friend's father, says, he's right. So I kind of had to figure out my own way from there. And how was I going to get through school? You know, education is still important, but what do you learn is important more. So I really wanted to drive ships. You know, I, I read stories of merchant ships and whaling ships and traveling the world, you know, going to Tahiti, you know, I watched Marlon Brando and Mutiny on the Bounty. And so I went to school to be a ship's officer and I was fascinated by oil. Why? I don't know. Just kind of inside of me. So I sailed for Standard Oil of California, but the Vietnam War was still on since 69. And I volunteered for the U.S. Marine Corps. So I gave up back then. I wasn't making this much away. My, my classmates in 1969 were making 120000 a year. That's a lot of money back then. So we were the highest paid graduates in the world. I'm sailing for Standard Oil, making about 48,000 a year in 69. And I gave it up, become a lieutenant in the U.S. Marine Corps, 200 a month. Mm. We go to flight school in Pensacola, Florida, and then straight to Vietnam, Camp Pendleton, straight to Vietnam. So did I plan all that? No. Am I glad I did it? Yes. But when I was in Vietnam, I, I realized something horrible. I said, our country lies to us. You know, here I am, red, white, and blue. If you call me a traitor, I'll kill you. But I realized we were being lied to. We had this guy, Robert McNamara, and Nixon, and Lyndon Johnson. And then I'd watch Walter Cronkite on television. I was a pilot, so we were calling in airstrikes and flying. And I could see the battle from the air and all this. And we were losing the war back then. This is 72, 73. And what Walter Cronkite reported wasn't the news. It was fake. And I tell you something turned my stomach, you know, because here I am, red, white, and blue. God bless America, U.S. Marine. It saddened me to no end. It just saddened me. I said, why are we lying to us? And, um, but the good news, something else good happens. So as the North Vietnamese were running across the DMZ, the militarized zone, Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. And I said, Jesus, what's gold? You know, what's gold? So in in 1972, 
I went looking for this stuff here. That's a real gold coin. I said, why did he take the dollar off the gold standard? And the reason the balloon hangs back there, that's the US economy. The real little basket floating on this hot air balloon of debt, you know. Well, the reason Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard was to get the whole economy to float on fake, fake money, fake media, exactly everything my friend Trump says, you know. It's fake news, fake money, everything's fake today. So here I am, a Marine Lieutenant in Vietnam going, we have fake money. And the North Vietnamese were overrunning us. And so Marines aren't the brightest guys in the, on the box. I said, well, let's go buy some gold. And this is in 72. And I said, well, the only, the only trouble is the gold mines behind enemy lines. Again, Marines aren't the brightest. I said, no problem. We'll go in really quickly. We'll get out quickly. So we flew behind enemy lines to buy gold. And I was negotiating for that one little coin and the woman wouldn't budge. I thought she was, I thought she would discount it from 50 bucks to 40 bucks because she was behind enemy lines and she wouldn't budge. Look, she had little red teeth, you know, little Vietnamese woman. So now spot, 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 hell spot, you know. There's two college graduates like you and I standing there. She's educating us about what money really is. This is in Vietnam. Now in enemy territory, I said, I'm getting, I'm getting schooled right now. And that's when I became a gold book because that little gold coin, I paid 50 bucks for it eventually in Hong Kong. Today is worth 2000. And the reason the gold coin was 50 bucks in 1972, and it's 2000 today, is because they just keep pumping more money into the economy. So our money is fake. In your opinion, are we on the brink of collapse? Well, we're getting closer if we're not. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I think, you know, there was Lehman Brothers in 2008. You're probably too, too young to remember that one. But I was on CNN calling that Lehman Brother was going to go down. So you can check Wolf Blitzer and me and all that. I was calling this going down. The baby boom generation, I could give us some history because history tells you what happened. In 71, Nixon took us off the gold standard. Then 74, my generation, the boomer generation, we went from a defined benefit pension plan to a defined contribution. Today, it's known as a 401k. And what's going to happen, you know, as they keep raising interest rates today, the stock market keeps coming down. So that means my generation, the boomer generation, we had it the easiest. Of any generation in history, our generation had it the easiest. See, we bought a house, went from 50,000 to 200,000. I mean, the stock market, it went up. So the boomers are toast. That's my generation. And you guys are going to have to pick up the bill. There's one more thing that's going to go, which is Social Security. So that hot air balloon sitting behind there with a little gondola underneath of it is you and me hanging under this balloon. There's a reason I have it there. And that's why, you know, this here is real silver. I only buy what's real. I don't buy SLV or GLD. I don't buy paper. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't. But when I, when, when I, when that little woman in Vietnam, I'm, I'm hiding behind enemy lines trying to negotiate a $10 discount on an ounce of gold. And she's educating me. I'm going, how much don't we know? Small ebook, big impact, the wealth tree, the only four ways that will make you financially free forever. Download it here for free.